So, if you are a 3D artist, you will no doubt understand how challenging it can be to master lighting. If you've been doing this for some time, you will have felt the sting of spending hours trying to get this stage of the pipeline perfected. You're not alone. This stage is an unforgiving craft, but it doesn't have to be. Today, I'm going to try and show you everything that's involved within lighting, within the Unreal 5 engine, and if you use Blender or any other 3D package, the language spoken here today will also be applicable to those tools. We will look at basic lighting setups, such as point lamps, we'll then move into dynamic lighting, HDRIs, and lastly, how to blend all of these together to get the best results. Number one, basic lighting tools. All 3D platforms come equipped with basic lighting tools. You have a point lamp, spotlight, and rectangle light. Each have their own purpose, and although they are very basic in principle, you should never discard them for other systems that promise better results. It's best to learn the foundations before moving into any advanced systems. Point lamps are a type of light source in the Unreal 5 engine that emit light in all directions. They are useful for creating localized sources of light, such as desk lamps or light bulbs. To create a point lamp, in Unreal 5, open the Unreal Editor and navigate to the Actor Component panel. From here you can add point lamp components to your scene by clicking on the Add Component and selecting Point Lamp from the list. Once you've added the point lamp component, you can adjust the properties to control the appearance of the light. The most important properties to consider are the intensity and color, with the intensity controls being how bright the light is and the color controls being the tint of the light itself. You can also adjust the size of the lamp by adjusting the source radius property. Another important property to consider is the source length. This controls the size of the light source along the z-axis. A larger value will make the light source appear larger and more diffused, while a smaller value will make the light source appear smaller and more focused. One of the most powerful features of the point lamp in Unreal 5 is the ability to control the fall off of the light itself. Fall off refers to the way in which the light intensity decreases as you move away from the light source. By adjusting the attention radius property, you can control the distance at which the light intensity reaches zero. Number two, rectangle lights. Rectangle lights and spotlights work in a very similar manner. So I am going to group these two together. Once you have created your rectangle light, you will be able to adjust its properties in the details panel with some of the most important properties considering including intensity. This controls the brightness of the light. You can adjust this to make the light brighter or dimmer as needed. Color, this controls the color of the light. You can use a color picker to select a specific color or you can use the temperature setting to adjust the color based on the temperature of the light. I would suggest using a Kelvin chart that way you can get very realistic results based on real light properties. The shape controls the size and shape of the light. You can adjust the width, height and depth of the light to fit your scene. Rectangle and spotlights are a diegetic form of light, meaning that they are really good for achieving desired results of illuminating objects within your scene. Something like a car spotlight or a flashlight would be a good example. They can also be used to highlight characters and main subjects. And when setting these in your scene, you want to position the light correctly, so make sure that the light is positioned in a way that makes sense for your scene. If you're trying to simulate a window, for example, you will want to position the light so that it appears to be coming from outside the window. Experiment with different intensities. Try adjusting the intensity of your rectangle light to see how it affects the scene. You may find that a brighter light works better in some situations, while a dimmer light works better in others. Use color to create mood. The color of your rectangle light can be used to create a specific mood in your scene. A warm orange light can be used to create a cozy and inviting atmosphere, while a cool blue light might be used to create a more tense or airy atmosphere. Number three, directional lights. A directional light is a type of light that simulates sunlight and is used to illustrate outdoor scenes. It is called a directional light because it emits light in a single direction, as opposed to a point lamp, which emits light in all directions. One of the most important properties to adjust is the direction property, which controls the direction in which the light is emitting. I personally like to place this in the center of my frame when working with cameras. That way I can adjust my light on the fly. You can also adjust the intensity properly as with every other light, but it's best to leave it at either base value or by tweaking it ever so slightly. The aim of the directional light is to simulate the sun, which is out of our control. By adjusting the light color, we can use a yellow light to simulate the warm glow of a sunset or a blue light to simulate the cool glow of moonlight. Number four, HDRIs. High dynamic range is a technique used to display a wide range of colors and brightness levels in digital images. 
This can greatly enhance the realism and overall visual appeal of your game or real time application. You will need to enable HDRIs in your project by going to the project settings, click on plugins, search for HDRI and enable it. You will then have to restart your project. Normally I will adjust the exposure or intensity of my HDRI ever so slightly. The benefit of this tool is that it requires very little adjustments. Unreal 5 does come with some basic HDRIs that you can choose from, but if you need something more specific to your scene, you can import your own HDRIs. A great website to consider is HDRI Haven. Number 5. Post Processing Perhaps the most important tool within Unreal 5 for finalizing gorgeous renders. Post Processing is a technique that is used to improve the visual quality of a game by applying various effects to the final image. In Unreal 5, the post processing tool can be accessed through the post processing tab in the main menu. Once a post processing volume has been added, developers can adjust various settings such as color grading, depth of field, and motion blur. Before you dive in, however, it is best to search for the Unbound tab and enable this. That way, your post processing box will cover your entire scene without you having to scale it. Very handy. The color grading feature allows developers to adjust the overall color and tone of the game. This can be used to create a specific mood or atmosphere, such as a warm and sunny day or a cold and snowy night. Developers can also adjust the brightness and saturation of the game, as well as the contrast and gamma. Number 5. Mixing all lighting techniques Now that we have a basic understanding of all the lighting tools, let's try and create a sunset across this desert environment. I will have an environment tutorial coming soon. However, please leave a comment if I shall live stream the process or simply record it. To start, let's add a directional light, then an exponential height fog, a sky atmosphere, a skylight, and lastly, a volumetric cloud system. A pro tip with lighting is to switch between detail lighting and rendered lighting. That way you can understand how the light is affecting the shadows and highlights. Let's place the directional light in the center of our frame or in a position that can be easily accessed. If the icon is not showing, press G to unhide the light itself. Now our light is a little too harsh, so let's play around with the direction to place the sun in the bottom left hand corner. Next, we want to enter our post processing and enable manual exposure. That way we have full control of how our camera will react to the light in our environment. Simply search for exposure, enable metering mode, select manual, apply physical camera exposure and disable the box. If your scene is very dark, you can now change the exposure compensation to what works best for your scene. Our scene is almost there, but there are a few extra steps needed to complete this. As this is an outdoor environment, we want to simulate a haze that would be caused by light refracting off the sand and dust particles floating in the air. So select your exponential height fog and search for volumetric. Then enable the fog. It is a very subtle effect, but if you want to add more, you can adjust the scale for a more dramatic effect. I like mine at four. Lastly, I'm going to select my skylight, change the source type to the specific cube map, and select the HDRI. I like the sunset map, but it is a little too dark, so I am going to adjust the intensity scale. 5 works pretty well. Now let's add some character light to our scene, using the rectangle lights for tail lights and fog lights. At this stage, all that is left is to tweak the post processing, add in some cameras, keyframe some elements, and render your project.